Good morning. Peter Gertz here. I'm a psychiatrist. Let's talk about suicide. Not the most pleasant topic. Um, we're talking about enormous despair often. People literally at the end of the rope, uh, at the end of their rope, not knowing what to do other than suicide. So um, there are various aspects to suicide. And uh, let's maybe look at some very basic, maybe a little philosophical issues. What is death? Um, what happens after death? I don't know if anyone can really say much about that. Um, but um, when the body dies, does everything else die? Does who you are end? I think that's probably um, something where people have grossly varying opinions. And when you think about it, your body is actually not consistent. You know, the atoms and molecules that make up your body, they're constantly being exchanged and renewed, replaced. So your body is actually not the same body as it was yesterday. And, you know, all the atoms and molecules in your body, body may have been replaced, you know, within a certain amount of years. So it's totally different, your body, at some point. But it's still the same you. So it's pretty obvious that your body itself does not define who you are. So even the death of your body is not necessarily the death of who you are. So that's kind of an interesting, to me, interesting philosophical viewpoint. So um, suicide attempts um, can happen, like I said, um, especially if someone's in despair. Often they happen on a background of a very difficult life, often abuse in childhood, neglect, not being treated well, feeling worthless as kind of a baseline. And then at some point with enough stress in their life, people uh, attempt suicide. And that can be pretty drastic. Um, I remember a patient who jumped out of a window sustaining multiple fractures, he survived, and then um, he was hospitalized on the ward where I worked, and he went home, and a few months later, he drank bleach in a suicide attempt and required a tracheostomy. So, um, these things can be um, very difficult to change. Um, you know, you can do your best treating these patients, but there's often a very long background of serious suffering, abuse, etc. And um, some of the more dangerous patients as far as suicide are the ones who are psychotic, for instance, paranoid, people kill themselves to get away from others, so to speak, so that before others can do it. So all kinds of things can happen. There can be voices telling people to kill themselves, which is pretty common. Um, one combination that in my experience is especially dangerous is the combination of depression and anger or irritability. That can really be a very serious fertile ground for a suicide attempt. Um, and there are many other risk factors, you can read that in the books. Older age, if someone's not working, not feeling useful, and like I mentioned, the anger, despair intoxication with alcohol or drugs, medical, physical illnesses, loneliness. A major risk factor, of course, is a previous suicide attempt if someone's already done it once. And another aspect is, for instance, if someone is dissociating, like in multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder, one of the alters can try and kill the person without the others necessarily knowing that even. So, Things can be quite complicated, and if someone dissociates part of them, one of their personalities um, could commit suicide without the rest of the personalities really knowing it. Um, one thing, I think, in hindsight that can help people not to try and commit suicide again is they often feel relieved afterwards that they did not die. So that's one thing to talk with patients about and help them to digest what happened. Now, from a psychiatrist's perspective, if a patient commits suicide or attempts suicide, that can be pretty stressful. Um, it's happened to me. I think, you know, if you're a psychiatrist long enough, it's going to happen to you probably, most likely. And just like in any specialty, um, we make mistakes every day. 
not necessarily even big mistakes, but we make misjudgments. I make mistakes every day. Um, we're, we're human. And I think um, that's one thing, to real, one thing to realize in general as a doctor and for anyone. Um, if a doctor says they've never made a mistake, they're either lying or in total denial, in my opinion. So, you know, we, we make mistakes and we do the best we can. Um, that doesn't mean, as a psychiatrist, you don't question yourself, ask yourself, you know, what happened after someone commits suicide. I remember, for example, a patient on a ward. He was dancing to disco music on a psychiatric ward. And 15 minutes later, he was in his room and found hanging. He tried to hang himself. So things can be somewhat unpredictable from moment to moment. And it's, it's very difficult to really um, understand what's going on for each individual patient at a given time, or at least it can be difficult. So um, another patient um, of mine, and that patient who tried to hang himself actually didn't quite die from that, but he died a few days later in the ICU. So really a, a difficult experience for the staff also, of course, for the patient. I mean, he'd come in because of a suicide attempt also. So, um, very difficult situation for, for everyone. Um, and uh, if something like that happens on a ward, of course, you want to sit down and process that as a team and talk about your feelings. Um, and um, as far as prevention, you know, suicide prevention is a term that's said a lot nowadays. And we definitely want to do the best we can to make our patients feel better and enjoy their lives. I mean, that's basically a big part of our job. Um, but in the long run, in my opinion, we cannot control another human being. We can hospitalize them, lock them up, put them on a one-to-one -one suicide watch, but that's not going to be indefinite. So ultimately, if someone really wants to kill themselves um, in the long run, we cannot control them. And in general, you know, that's something for all of us to face, I think, as human beings. We cannot control, ultimately, we, we cannot control other, other human beings. Again, that does not mean we don't do our best to really support those patients in feeling better. Things that can help um, are, if, in my experience at least, uh, if patients have strong spiritual beliefs that can help avoid a suicide attempt. If they have close relationships, like with children, family, with a partner. Um, two medications have been shown in studies to have um, efficacy in helping suicide prevention. Um, and that those medicines are lithium and clozapine. And another thing that's always kind of been in my face, I mean, the patients kind of make that clear to you, is that suicide and suicide attempts are not necessarily a black or white area. So if someone attempts suicide, that doesn't mean they want to kill themselves with total conviction in general. It's a big gray area. Um, and I remember a patient in the emergency room. Um, I was working in the emergency room as a resident and I'd finished interviewing the patient. It was very congenial. And he got up right in front of me and took out one of the bottles of his medicines and just swallowed the contents of the whole bottle right in front of me before security could get to him and prevent that. So um, that, you know, if someone does that, it's pretty clear that they don't 100% want to kill themselves because they're doing it right in front of you. Um, but still, they, they can die from that type of thing. And this patient actually went to the uh, medical ICU and survived. Um, somewhat analogously, I think, in people who inject heroin or use any drug very heavily, there can be a very self-destructive aspect to that. And there's often, like I said, underneath all that, there's a long history of depression and maybe abuse in childhood, all kinds of very difficult experiences. So... Um, if someone overdoses on heroin, that can kind of be a gray area. Was it really suicide? Did they just not care? Um, if you talk to patients, um, that type of thing is quite common, where they just you know, inject the heroin and don't necessarily care whether they survive or not. 
Um, and uh, other things, like I said, the spiritual beliefs can help, and especially or specifically spiritual beliefs regarding suicide. So if someone believes suicide is spiritually something that is going to be in the long run not a good thing for them, for instance, related to karma, um, that can also prevent a suicide attempt potentially. So someone's spiritual beliefs regarding suicide and death can be very important. So bottom line, I think one thing for all of us to realize is life um, is not always easy for anybody, but for some people there's enormous despair enormous challenges and for all of us what can be useful I think is to see life as one big schoolroom where we're trying to learn some very difficult lessons sometimes as best we can um, and um, if we approach things that way I think life can be more enjoyable and um, we've gotten used to thinking a lot or a lot of people have gotten used to thinking a lot instead of just being in the moment like for instance if you wake up out of a deep sleep it's very unlikely that you're immediately depressed because you're not thinking so um, if we can be more in the moment and not think or if we can be in the moment and not think that in general of course can be very helpful all right thank you